My name is John Andriozzi. I'm originally from Lackawanna, New York, and I've been asked to talk about uh, some of my immigrant ancestors. Each of my parents had a step-parent. Those people we never knew, and they're sort of like, uh, in the most friendly term, ghosts, people that are sort of linger out there in our imaginations, and we do have photographs. The first one was on my father's side, Giovanni Andriozzi, and he was born in uh, Falvatera, Lazio, which is just south of Rome. And he came over in 1909. It looks like he just got uh, off the boat, and he's with an older man who was apparently guiding him. He came to Buffalo, New York, and then down to Lackawanna. It was right on the shores of Lake Erie, and in 1900, they had built the largest steel plant in the world there. So he was married in uh, uh, 1915, late 1915, to my grandmother and she was Vincenza Limongello. She was born in an area called the Hooks, a tough waterfront uh, tenement in Buffalo, New York. She changed her name quickly to Jenny uh, Limoncello. Uh, that went easier on American ears. Uh, Limongello and Vincenza didn't go so well uh, with some people at that time. They were married and they settled in uh, Lackawanna, New York, right across from the steel plant. And they had uh, three children. The first was my father. It was named Filippo, uh, Philip, after his uh, uncle. Jenny and Giovanni were doing okay. My, the, my father was healthy. In 1918, Grandma Jenny gave birth to her second child, uh, Maria Giuseppe, named after her mother, uh, Mary Joseph. She died within three months in August of 1918. And then tragically, in November 1918, Giovanni died. John died very suddenly. He was taken to Columbus Hospital in Buffalo, which was the Italian hospital, and he died there within a matter of a week of the, Sp the, the Spanish flu. My father uh, didn't find out about this fact because Grandma remarried another Andriozzi, Tony Andriozzi, a year later. And my father always thought that that was his father. And then one day in uh, the little Italian neighborhood that they lived, I don't know how old my father was, someone said, you know, Tony's not your father. And my father said, what? And then uh, I think it was a very, uh, at the best, unfortunate way to find out that your father is your stepfather. Meanwhile, in Calabria, in southern Italy, my mother was born. Calabria is the toe of the Italian boot, and uh, she was born near Cosenza, which is the northern province of that in a, a small town called Marano Principato, born on Epiphania, the uh, January 6th of uh, 1918. Her uh, grandpa, Filiberto Covelli, had been going back and forth uh, between the United States and Calabria since 1899. His father went over in 1898 to Chicago, where many Calabrese went, and then uh, he sent for his oldest son, Filiberto, who goes there at age 16, and then he moves up to Kenosha, Wisconsin, where there's a whole bunch of people from that town, and he's working there, going back and forth. He's there, he, has, he gives birth to several more children, including my mother, and he goes to Lackawanna because he heard the jobs there paid better. They paid up to a dollar something a day, up to two bucks a day, and I have a picture of them in Italy where they glued uh, Filiberto's picture in America next to Rosina and the four kids they had. And my mother's thinking, oh, uh, everything's going to be great now. You know, we're doing all right. Ma's got some money. We're buying some new clothes. And we're going to see Pa, who we've never seen but once or twice in the United States. Well, Rosina suddenly takes ill in 1925 in March. She dies within uh, two weeks. We were to send to Grandpa. He keeps sending money back to Italy. But it takes him a year, a year and a half to get back there. Then he remarries Gelsomina and the family finally comes over in December of 1927, when my mother is not quite 10 years old. Now, Rosina is this ghost of the family, my mother's a real mother, but she remembers enough about her to tell stories about Rosina. But we always wondered what life would have been like if Rosina had survived, because the four children that were uh, Rosina's children at the time when she died, one of my uncles wrote that they never uh, truly recovered from that loss. My father didn't uh, always talk about him or remember him so much. We only found the story out from my father years later that he had a brother and sister that early who both passed away. Uh, Giovanni was a second child who died at age one a little bit later. 
and they were in a section of uh, Holy Cross Cemetery in Lackawanna that was reserved for many people and kids who died from the Spanish flu. There was no markers on their grave. So my father, myself, and my four uh, siblings, we all chipped in enough money to put markers on those, uh, on those stones. So um, I started all this talking about the two ghosts in the family, the two ghosts that are still hanging on our walls, Rosina uh, Ruffalo Cavelli, my mother's real mother, and Giovanni Andreozzi, my father's real father. And that's a little bit of my family history.